Hello everybody and welcome to Wednesday's Reflexology Wisdom. We're going to carry on with our series on foot charts or foot maps and today um, we're going to be looking at Hannah Markart. Um, so we've got a little picture of her there. Um, this is in days gone by before Covid. Um, I was actually um, privileged to be uh, on one of her courses and then even more privileged to receive a treatment from her as well. She's an absolute angel. She really, really is. Um, but her charts are amazing. And so we're going to dive in and have a look at them now. Now we're not going to be looking at an actual chart today. We're going to be using Hannah's Reflexotherapy of the Feet book because this actually has got a smashing breakdown of the charts that she's done. And we're going to start with what Hannah is most well known for in what she gave to reflexology, which is the horizontal lines. She, of course, was fully aware of uh, William Fitzgerald's 10 zones of the body, but then she also gave us the shoulder line the waistline and the pelvic line, which then, when we start to look at the foot maps, it allows us to break down those vertical lines into a grid, and so much more easily allows us to plot and chart where certain reflexes are on the body. So this is one of the um, major things that Hannah is known for. Let's have a look at an overview page of the reflexes of the feet. Now, can you just see here the detail? Absolutely fabulous. So we have got dorsal aspect of the foot and we have the plantar aspect of the foot. And we're going to dive into the differences that um, Hannah places on these two areas of the feet in just a moment. But one of the charming things, the real charming things that I find about Hannah's charts are that you can see that they've been drawn with a crayon. It's just brilliant. Um, these charts were put together such a long time ago. And um, obviously it's before the days of uh, computer graphics and stuff like that. And so what we have here is the best that we could get and it's just great to actually see where she's kind of scribbled in and etched and it really does look like a crayon and I just love it I really really do there's a warmth to this that actually if you get to meet Hannah you will understand why there is this just gorgeous warmth to the work that she does so what we're going to do, we're going to carry on through the pages and we're going to pick out some individual aspects that I want to talk about. The first thing that I want to talk about here is how Hannah, to me, is actually a real trailblazer. Because in a lot of the charts that we have nowadays, or rather when Let's just say when I was training, we're going to zoom in just here. When I was training, reproductive reflexes just weren't talked about. They really, really weren't. But Hannah, because she was a midwife before she was a reflexologist, actually includes the reproductive male and reproductive female reflexes on the feet. So this foot here is the male with the scrotum, the penis, the prostate, the vas deferens. And then this foot here where we have the uterus. And even though she places these reflexes on the inside of the heel, um, which some people now don't, the wonderful thing is she has positioned the prostate in the correct place. 
and she has correct, cor correctly positioned the, bl uh, the bladder in the right place as well, in that it is in proximity to um, the uh, uterus and the prostate, in proximity to the bladder as well. So I think this is just absolutely wonderful. The one thing that eagle-eyed of you will see though, which doesn't happen on the body, is she has shown the bladder to be in one place on the male and the bladder to be in a, in a different place on the female. So that's just interesting. So that's just a little point uh, just here. The other thing, um, when we take into account the age at, uh, of development, shall we say, of reflexology, is if we go on to the next page, we can see here that we have got the arms. Well, we've got certainly the upper arm, but we have got no lower arm. We've also got reflexes for the knee and for the thigh. And um, when I was being trained by Hannah, she was she said to me, she said that as far as she is concerned, there is still too much dispute about the lower leg and the lower arm for her to agree that they um, can be mapped sufficiently accurately. So as far as Hannah is concerned, we only have the upper arm that we can work and we've only got from the hip to the knee. So these two points just here are the knee reflexes. And um, as far uh, with Hannah, we've got them on the lateral and the medial aspect of the leg just here. So that's how she places these. Now, do you remember me saying that I consider Hannah to be a real trailblazer, somebody really, really in advance? So not only with the reproductive reflexes, but also she mapped the teeth. Now, let's just zoom in just here. We have got upper jaw and lower jaw. And so she shows the teeth on the toes. Yes, she also says that the toes are the sinuses. But this is amazing because both with the reproductive reflexes and with the teeth reflexes, they don't make a reappearance until we get to about, oh good grief, let me think, um, 20, no, 2006 stroke 2007 on the charts, they completely disappeared. Um, for reproductive organs, it seemed like reflexology got far too prudish. Uh, you couldn't possibly have a penis shown on the uh, reflexology maps. Oops, mentioning that word probably going to get me a strike on um, YouTube, but hey-ho, it's a biological word and um, we are talking biology here. Um, so yes, we've got the lower jaw and the upper jaw. And I'm so, so... Um, pleased to say that we are now starting to see these reflexes being brought in again. The other wonderful thing is, is with her charts that she shows, breaks things down in so much detail. So you can see that on the overview, you just wouldn't be able to see where everything was at a glance. And so as we continue through the pages on her uh, reflexotherapy book, she breaks it down into systems absolutely wonderful and let's just kind of go on to this page as well so absolutely fabulous the next one that i want to talk about <clears throat> actually um i was only chatting to somebody yesterday via email about the positioning of the ribs and here we have in hannah's book we can clearly see that she shows the toe nails so, and also we can see here she's clearly saying dorsal and so she takes the metatarsals 
as a guide for where the ribs would be as far as mapping them onto the feet. Um, we have then got a further example of the way round that she sees the feet. We've then got on the plantar aspect, we then have the scapula at the back of the foot. So this is the plantar aspect of the foot where we would see the, um, the scapula. And of course, we would, we all, I think, work this ball area of the foot under the little toe because we say that is where the joint of the shoulder girdle is. So of course if that's where the joint of the shoulder girdle is, why would the scapula not be there? It's absolutely clear. And that, that's again what I absolutely love about Hannah's charts is the clarity of them. Let's just carry on. And uh, something that I'm wanting to now bring into the equation is also, I'm just going to zoom out. Wrong way. Here we go. Is that we have got dorsal, plantar, showing both the lungs, the heart, and then the lungs and the heart. Hannah could see that you could work through the foot. So it didn't have to be, oh, you can only access such and such a reflex on the dorsal aspect. Or you could only access such and such a reflex on the plantar aspect of the foot. She was showing clearly here that um, you could work through the foot and uh, yesterday somebody was asking me about working uh, uh, on the reflexes for a client with um, broken ribs and so I was saying well absolutely you would be working the dorsal aspect for the anatomical connection because of the metatarsals but also work the lung reflex so the lung reflex on the plantar aspect of the foot because then you are still going to be supporting that healing process for the ribs from within the inside. Finally, the last thing I'm just wanting to talk about as well is the um, mammary reflexes and the solar plexus reflex. So again, um, Hannah not frightened to talk about reproductive organs. And again, she's clearly placing these on the dorsal aspect and choosing not to show them on the plantar aspect. So we can see quite clearly which way round um, she is mapping the feet. Because this does seem to be quite an area of contention. And I am going to be showing in a future episode where a map shows it absolutely the other way round. Is it right? Is it wrong? I would just say they're different. And there are reasons for the differences. Um, Hannah has justified it by using the bones. Hannah positions all of her reflexes. When she teaches, she says, you've got to feel the bones. And I totally agree with her. Um, for other reflexologists, they will be pointing to other uh, landmarks, shall we call it, um, for positioning uh, reflexes. The last one I just want to uh, show is the solar plexus. Now, this one you might be looking at thinking, oh, that's different. Let's just zoom in on it. So we can see here, it's right in the center of the feet, equidistant from top to bottom, which isn't quite where our solar plexus is, because of course our solar plexus is um, in that soft area between the rib cage at the base of the sternum. But what Hannah is locating this from is this first metatarsal and it is at the base of that metatarsal. So basically she's saying it's at the base of the sternum. Even though on the foot chart it's showing it looking like the reflex is positioned slightly low. So that's why she places it where it is just there and right in the center 
of the foot um, because she is saying this is the center of the body we've got the midline that comes right down this area here and then we start going across the body from the midline here again there are other charts that are um, based on the fact that things are slightly different again we're going to look at those as we get into the charts so guys I hope you have enjoyed Wednesday's reflexology wisdom today I hope that you have enjoyed looking through Hannah's uh, book I've, I've literally only shown you just a few of her diagrams for her reflexes um, if you do get a chance to get hold of this book do because um, it's not only just full of glorious images and um, pointers for the reflexes but so much good advice as well um, and a very different story um, to how she came to discover reflexology as well so do stay safe stay well and looking forward to seeing you next week for more Wednesday's Reflexology Wisdom.